All right, this is the astronaut training problem. I'll read out the text. During training, astronauts practice experiencing high accelerations like the ones they may experience in their missions. Part of this training involves being whirled rapidly in a circle with a radius of five meters at a constant speed. Okay, so radius five meters, speed constant. And there's our astronaut moving around his circle, uniform circular motion. All right, so if we take a look at the rest of that problem, A, what is the tangential speed required to achieve a 5G acceleration? And in what direction is this acceleration? All right, so we want to know Okay. And if we're thinking about that, well, the tangential velocity is just, you know, whatever this constant speed is here. And we have an equation for the acceleration he must experience, which is the centripetal acceleration. He's clearly not accelerating tangent to the circle because otherwise he wouldn't be having a constant speed, right? He'd be speeding up or slowing down. So a sub c is just that tangential velocity we're looking for squared over the radius of the circle that the astronaut is going in. And we know that a sub c has to be equal to 5g for this all to work out. So solve for v of t, you get 5g r square rooted, okay? And if you plug in all of those values, you should get a tangential velocity of 5.7 meters per second. Okay, nice and simple. So for B, we're asked, what is the angular velocity that corresponds to this tangential velocity? Okay, this is a do you know how to use this tool kind of question. And angular velocity is related to tangential velocity in this way. Right? That's the equation. You'll find that on your equation sheet. And since we know V of T is about 15.7, and we know that the R involved here, the astronaut is going along or going around that circle, is 5 meters. <clears throat> Divide one by the other, and we get 3.13 rads per second. Don't use the wrong units there, right? Angular velocity, so we're talking about rads per second, okay, radians per second. Part C, how would the acceleration in part A compare to the acceleration of a box sitting two meters from the axis of rotation? Okay, so in other words, if we've got a box, say, sitting, well, to scale, be right about there, right? What would be its... <clears throat> acceleration. Okay, so in part A, right, the acceleration was 5g, and so we need to figure out what this acceleration would be. And the thing to realize here is that omega is the same for both, right? And if you realize that, then you know that a sub c is this, which can be rewritten as this. <clears throat> and we can just substitute for what we know. That's the radius that it's at, two meters from the center. And if you plug all of that in, you get about 19.6 meters per second squared. In other words, 2g. Okay. Now, that's not the only way to do that problem. You can go through and work out what its tangential velocity must be based on the little circle that it's tracing out. Okay. And then you can use this sort of uh, standard form of centripetal acceleration that we used in part A. But either way, you'll get to this conclusion as long as you're thinking about it clearly. All right. That's that problem. On to the next one.